Some 10 years ago, I became involved in a case which became known as the House of Horrors. That, that was a case in which uh, some 15, 20 kids were housed in a house and treated extremely poorly, abused to the point whereby one or two of the children had to be taken to hospital because of malnutrition. Now, it was reported today that a 21-year-old who was in that house when he was about nine or 10, uh, he had committed an assault, a sexual assault against a 13-year-old. Now, the reason why I wanna talk about this is that it's really important to try and understand that this particular young person was traumatized severely by the experiences he had within this home. Now, I also know of some of the kids that were in this house who did survive in the sense that they were able to get their lives together, they were able to have partners, they were able to, as it turned out in the end, have children of their own. Yet, for some reason, this 21-year-old slipped through the gaps. I appreciate that he was traumatised while with this family, that he had experiences that we could only wish would never happen to anybody else, particularly to kids. But the question I'm asking is, did the system itself put in place enough therapy, enough care, enough consideration for this young person so that he could get on with his life? No, they didn't. It appears that he was in foster care for um, this period of time, and I think some of this time he was probably in residential care. And I wonder about the type of care that was offered to him. Now, at one level, we can blame the parents for the terrible way that they treated these kids and we certainly can hold them responsible. And we have done so because they've been incarcerated. But then we as a society need to look at this and start to wonder, well, did we do enough? Were we able to provide the care, the nurturing, the mentoring that these kids needed in order to be able to get on with their lives, to treat other people respectfully? Well, the evidence is demonstrating now that we didn't. And at what point do we take responsibility or do we ask the Department of Child Protection to take responsibility for the way these kids have turned out? I think we need to. I think we're beyond just saying, well, these kids came from lousy families, that they had poor experiences, that there is nothing that can be done for them that they're lost causes. Those days are gone. We have to take responsibility for what's happened to these kids. And in an article in the Advertiser today, um, it does talk about the experiences that he had, the fact that he was traumatised, um, and that uh, he therefore is perhaps, as the judge had said, perhaps not totally responsible for what happened to him. And to some extent, there's some truth in that, in that he wasn't responsible for the terrible family he found himself in. He wasn't responsible for the horrific abuse that occurred. And there were two families in this. I don't know which one he was. I'm assuming he was one of the uh, Kem Staker family. So um, that, but we must find a way to analyse whatever has happened to this young man and to find ways to address those particular issues. Because for half of his life, his parents were not his guardians. The guardian for this young man happened to be the state. So therefore, did the state let him down? Did the state not do what they should have done in order to protect him? Is the state responsible for the fact that he assaulted a 13-year-old and traumatised her? in the same way, perhaps, that he himself was traumatised when he was young. The state is responsible, and we must look at this in the light of the fact that state was 
the guardian, was the parent, if you like, of this young person. So the judge says, you have a shocking personal history, deserving of considerable sympathy. There's no doubt about that. Don't disagree with the judge. You were malnourished and emaciated and suffered substantial bruising and skin infection. You developed paranoia and anxiety as a feature of the complex trauma you suffered. And maybe so, and no one's disputing that. But if the system knew that this child was suffering in this way, why weren't they doing anything about it? What stopped them from helping this child so that he could grow into a respectful adult? Um, they did talk about the original case, which is some 10, 11 years ago. Five of those children were starved, beaten, choked, and made to stand all day and night facing a wall. They were fed only the scraps left over after the other 16 children in the house had eaten and share of hot chips or noodles. Um, the children had come to South Australia from Victoria, where local media had also labelled their home there as a house of horrors. Uh, five adults in the house were subsequently jailed, including the mastermind Tanya Staker, for their involvement in the abuse, which was called beyond comprehension by the sentencing judge in 2011. So, I guess my point is that regardless of the circumstances in which someone may find themselves as a child, if the system takes over the responsibility of having to care for that child, then surely, surely the system must be responsible for the outcomes that are derived from the department's intervention. As I said earlier, I know of some of those kids from that experience who have turned out okay Many haven't. And there are a couple of kids that were born while um, the matter was going through the court who didn't experience these, the horrors of the House of Horrors. They've grown up in care their whole lives. I'm hoping that they're okay. Thanks everybody for being with me. If you just remember to hit the bell below or subscribe to my page. Take care, look after yourselves and be safe.